Hey guys, Tara here for Rev3 Games. I'm at GDC right now, and one of the things I was most excited to see while I was here was the panel for FTL. If you're not familiar, this is the game that got kickstarted last year, ended up coming out in September to great accolades. Uh, this is basically a roguelike space management game. So you control a spaceship, control all your little guys on it, and you basically go throughout space and destroy a bunch of other spaceships. So after the panel, I grabbed Justin and Matt from Subset Games to see exactly what it's been like developing a game for Kickstarter. Hey guys, Tara here for Rev3 Games, and today I am hanging out with Matt and Justin from Subset Games. They're the guys who created FTL, which you probably heard of. Uh, one of the most, well, one of the first and most successful Kickstarters for a video game. Uh, but it didn't start off as a Kickstarter, did it? No, we, we put in about a year of development on FTL. And we, once we were running out of funds, we turned to Kickstarter as a... As yeah, a we basically saved up a year's worth of, of food money and rent money. And then once that started to go out, when we weren't done yet, we are like, I guess we got to do something. So kick, we turned to Kickstarter, which at the time wasn't as uh, commonly used for games. So. But yeah, one, you guys came out right after the Double Fine one, right? Yeah, and Double Fine was driving the traffic the, yeah. The, yeah. to Kickstarter that we probably would have never seen without. Oh, yeah, them. ride that train for all its worth. Exactly. Uh, and it was also good that we'd had the year of development because we had a product that we could show. Yeah. It wasn't just this promise of something. There was actually, because it was during IGF here, so there was an on-live event that you could play the game on, on live and that let people play the game and see that it was actually fun and something that was possible. And so that really drove the Kickstarter as well, as opposed to what you see a lot now, which is earlier Kickstarters yeah. to the actual game. It does seem like a very niche game. Like, what was the inspiration for this? Because it's clearly a project that you guys had conceived for a while and really loved and wanted to nurture. We usually point to board games as one of the primary inspirations. Uh, there are a lot of board games that focus on the ship management concept, that you're the commander instead of the pilot. Like you get to control people on the on the ship. Either you are a person running around the ship, or you're controlling multiple people on the ship. And we we looked at video games and didn't see that quite as much. And so we kind of wanted to capture that Star Trek feel that you can get from board games that you weren't getting from computer games. Is there? I know you guys uh, chose Kickstarter just to sort of help finish and fund the project. Do you have any regrets about that? Because uh, I I saw your panel earlier and you were saying it seems like it's kind of a mixed bag, right? Well, it was a double-edged sword. I mean, looking back, we wouldn't have not done it. Like, overall, it made the game what it was, and I can't really imagine if we hadn't done it. During those early days, when we were looking at how many people we would need to be able to uh, deal with support for the beta, and how many people are just interested in expecting the game, we were definitely sort of regretting it a bit. Um, you know, in balance with excitement from now that people care and we have money and so so that's what I mean, it was a sort of double. Yeah, and it sort of forces you to creatively compromise also because it raises all these expectations, right? Yeah, um, Which, there's a lot of expectations about what the game, some were more correct than others, I guess. And it's very stressful having those expectations. Even if it is the, they have the same expectations, even if they align with you, it's still the stress levels of having 10,000 people staring at you while you make a game, basically. And if we it's, don't it's succeed kind of now, there's someone else who's unhappy besides just yeah, us. Yeah, besides just us. Yeah, so like just, whereas previ you gotta understand previously, we were literally just for months just working by ourselves, um, just uh, the two of us. Um, we had Ben's help for just adding sounds to the game, um, but. It really was just like a small passion project. So when it sort of got out to the public, that was a severe change, a very strong change from what it was previously. Did you guys make a lot of sacrifices to the game's features and stuff just to sort of ameliorate people? I think we probably cut features to make sure it got out on time, but I wouldn't have called it sacrificing. It really benefited the game, if anything, to, to trim it down to what was only necessary for the game to be good. And it helped us focus the project to make sure it got the necessary components. And, but it was definitely more of a rush because we suddenly had a deadline that we felt mattered. We had 10,000 people expecting the game to come out at a certain time, and so we wanted to hit that even if it wasn't the perfectly designed deadline. That well, I saw the, uh, the early prototypes that you guys showed in your panel. Was there like a major evolution of the game from when you started the Kickstarter to when the game actually came out? The kick, at the Kickstarter's point, we pretty much knew the game that we would want to make. We kind of knew what it was. So um, we knew the sort of features that we would need to add to the game, such as aliens, general variety, lots more interesting uh, weapons, some sort of metagame that sort of encouraged the people to keep coming back. 
we didn't know exactly what those details would necessarily be, but we just sort of had an outline for what we wanted to be in the game. And after the Kickstarter got so successful, we had sort of had to reevaluate how much can we actually do in this amount of time. So it, it, that scope grew uh, considerably from uh, pre-Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. Is there any advice that you would have for other developers seeking out maybe a Kickstarter to fund their project? Just not to underestimate the responsibility you end up feeling towards the people that are the backers. And not to underestimate perhaps how well you can do. Because we were expecting a much smaller group. And you know, mostly they say don't get your hopes up, but there is an element that maybe you should be prepared that if it does do very well, what do you do next from there? Yeah, we hadn't even conceived of the fact that we would get past 20,000 or something. So is there a lot of on the spot, okay, what do we do now kind of thing? How do we, how do we actually respond to these people? Um, I mean, there's a lot of groups that structure their whole game development with their community in mind, so they probably wouldn't like phase them at all. But for us, it, like, it, that was something we had to learn on the spot. Mm -hmm. um, Is that, like, when you're creating a game like this, um, how do you make sure that it's fun? Because it seems like you had an idea of what you wanted exactly, but actually tweaking the small things, it seems like that has sort of a bigger part in it than people might think. All we did were playing it a lot and a lot and a lot. And I didn't think it was fun for a long time. I didn't think it was fun even was after fun. the Kickstarter. <laughs> <laughs> I, there was more, I, I felt like it still needed more and there was something better. By the end, I was having a blast with it. And I still can't believe that I can go back and play it and have fun. I didn't think that would ever really happen. It's harder to have fun with a game that you're designing. But it was definitely just, we relied on an intuitiveness of playing it ourselves and kind of seeing what we felt would be right. Yeah, um, we did get a lot of feedback from people. Like it, initially, the, the whole point of the game was we're trying to make a game that we ourselves would want to play. So, um, and so that sort of structured what we defined as fun. We didn't, frankly, we thought no, like some super, super small percentage of, of gamers would actually be interested in something like this initially. And so we were shocked to find out that this, actually people find this fun. I wouldn't have thought people had found this much like, you know, beating you to the ground <laughs> over and over to actually be fun. So um, it was really just focusing on what we thought uh, would be enjoyable. And that happened to coincide with a lot of people, apparently. Mm -hmm. Well, the high difficulty level is kind of a hallmark of your game. Is that also something that you guys wanted in from the very beginning? And how did beta testers and people who bought into the Kickstarter respond to that? Um, I, I think we, one of the core principles that we, was that we wanted, uh, like, decisions that you make to actually matter. We wanted it to feel like when you chose something that led to a bad decision, like it felt, it felt important. So like that sort of lends itself towards permadeath and high difficulty. Um, and, and we definitely, we ourselves are quote unquote hardcore gamers or whatever. So we much prefer very difficult games. Um, how people responded to it, I think most of the beta people, like Matt was saying in the talk, like they were pretty hardcore gamers. These are people who would be willing to pay twenty-five dollars for a game that's otherwise ten dollars, and they're so they were they were more expecting this sort of very serious experience, and they sort of helped us structure the game to be difficult but still fun. So uh, those were the people we wanted to please more than anybody else. Yeah. That really hardcore audience was kind of the. the always from the beginning of the approach. Yeah, like the easy mode was added, uh, I don't know, a few weeks or a month before yeah. the, the release of the game, and therefore it's not as well of a balanced um, experience, but, um, and that's why we call normal, normal instead of absurdly difficult. Mm -hmm. games, yeah. Because that's the, 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 the experience we wanted people to have. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have any plans to release any kind of post-launch content, or we had hoped to, but um, at some point, but we kind of got bogged down with um, with other stuff, and we're pretty happy with the state of the game. Yeah, as we it is. we just like it. We worked really hard to make it feel like one complete product, and we kind of don't want to just like blow it out with tons yeah. of stuff. Just because you can add more stuff doesn't mean you necessarily should. Yeah, totally. And there's a certain House of Cards aspect that I feel like with the design that if we could easily topple it if we try to do too much to it. Mm -hmm. And I think we're both excited about perhaps thinking about other things than, yeah. than the devotion we've had to FTL for the last couple of years. Well, this is wishful thinking, but are there any plans ever for an iOS port at all? Uh, so there are plans to look into it. We're gonna, uh, we 
refuse to promise anything that we're e there's even a possibility of it not happening, but we will look into it and we hope it will work well because we also would love to see it on It fits the yeah. Star Trek thing. It Having, works so holding well. Holding the tablet yeah. and commanding the starship is the correct yeah, thing. Yeah, and now going. with Enemy Unknown coming to the, uh, yes. the oh, iPad, yeah. I think it, now's a great time to do that sort of thing. I, I love the game. I'm, I'm really excited. I thought y'all's panel was great. Um, any hints as to a future project at all? Are you guys working on something else already? We'll stay silent. We haven't started. We haven't really started we, there's nothing anything. to talk about, yeah. <laughs> but we probably won't talk about it until we have something that Quite we, far along that into the we're project. confident with. It would be again like FTL. We'd, we would have a, a fairly complete into the, game yeah. before we would be saying anything. Well, uh, FTL is out right now on Windows, Mac, and Linux, and if you don't own it already, you're wrong. You're just wrong. <laughs>